Hello, this is Solar PV TV from G7 site event devoted to Africa, organized by NL Foundation, by uh, EU Africa Partnership, and also uh, Rest for Africa. And now it's quite interesting because in this sunny country, we have a guy who came from the north, but actually he's one of the pioneers of new business models for solar energy in Africa. Hello, Jesper. Hello, how are you? So Jesper, just very shortly, can you tell us more about uh, your beginnings in solar with uh, GiveVats? Uh, you are founder of the company. You are one of the first guys who came with new business models in order to introduce solar to Africa. Well, uh, it's, it's uh, well, in summary, what it really comes down to is finding what is relevant for the households that you, you want to sell to. And that's what you then try to provide in a sustainable way. Sustainable as in business sustainable. Uh, you, need to, you need to have the distribution set up. You need to be able to support them uh, with reverse logistics, with warranty issues. Uh, and you need to be relevant. Very, very important. And as long as you do that, then you have a business. And uh, that's what we're doing. And actually, uh, you were, during the discussion, you were mentioning some problems, yes? Mm. So could you tell me which are the major issues now that you see in Africa which we should overcome in order really to boost the market in Africa? On the example, for example, of Kenya. Um, th there are quite a few uh, challenges for a business anywhere. Um, I think we are at the, an early stage in developing the market in the industry. We're, we still need to learn, we still need to be innovative, we need to be present so that we see where we need to be innovative. Um, overarching challenges is uh, lack of financing, not necessarily for us, but in the whole distribution chain, which means that you then need to provide credit, you need to, you need to uh, uh, own the stock even if you deliver it to, to shops and stuff for a long time, so you expose yourself to, to high risk. That's a challenge. Another overarching challenge for any business in Africa is um, corruption. That's a, a real issue. Um, if you're in private sector, you can sort of avoid it quite a bit. You just sort of, you don't do it um, because you never interact with it. That's what we do. But we can see that it, it affects the rest of the economy. And if it affects the rest of the economy, it slows the economic growth significantly. Kenya, for example, has a, a fairly decent growth, somewhere between 5 and 7% uh, expected this year. That's good, but without the corruption, it would be above 10. Okay, so let's uh, now return to your company. What is actual business? We are a distribution company in effect, uh, but what we distribute is renewable energy products. So we have solar lamps, we have solar home systems, uh, we have cooking solutions, uh, we have various appliances that function with the solar home systems, mobile phones, uh, radios, fans, etc. And um, uh, it, we, basically our, our model is that if you come to a household and they have no electricity whatsoever, it's a very big step for them. So you need to take it gradually. And once they've started climbing that energy ladder, as we call it, we can provide more and more products. Now, that has to happen in tandem with the distribution and availability of other products that they will then need. So if you have a lamp, what are you likely to do? Well, actually, maybe I need a pen and paper so my kid can, can do homework. Maybe I need books, maybe I need glasses, maybe I, I, um, I can save money because I'm not spending so much on kerosene or mobile charging and I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy sanitary pads for my daughter so that they can go to school four weeks a month instead of three. Those things, you, you have to sort of understand what the customer wants. Customer at the center, very, very important. So at the beginning, let's say you make like an entry to the household yep. and then you are bringing more products. Yes, correct. And uh, last question, because the topic today is Africa 2030. Yeah? So let's say, how do you imagine from your point of view, your experience, Africa in 2030? Mm -hmm. And uh, besides the fact that uh, you will be still young, like we are today, yes, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> uh, how uh, your business will be going and how it will look like in 2030? Very good question. I, th I don't think we can know today. I think Africa is one continent, but it has many countries. I think parts of Africa will develop very rapidly and others, uh, other parts will not develop so quickly. I think you need to be adaptive. You need to read the market. You need to understand what the customer wants. You need to incorporate the new technology that, that we don't even know about yet and that is relevant for that particular market. And that's what you, that's what you need to do. I mean, if you go back 20 years uh, and you were to say, how do you think Europe, will, our, our continent, uh, how do you think Europe will look in 20 years? I, don't, I wouldn't get it right anyway, I'm pretty sure. So I think you just need to be adaptive. You need to keep your senses open and you need to, you need to flow with that. What about your company? Uh, the company will adapt to that, but I very much think that we will still be working with distributing relevant products to customers. Okay, thank you so much. That was Solar PV TV together with the founder of 
uh, give that, uh, Jesper Hornberg, Hornberg uh, one of the pioneers, let's say, of the new business models in Africa. Thanks for watching.